Hey everybody, David Wood here for EverythingEffects.tk and this is the new tutorial for GIMP and it will show you how to take the flame plugin and really enhance it, make it look really neat and improve your shots. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is open a new document and we'll choose a nice large one so that we can use it as a background if we like. Okay, so this is assuming you all have some knowledge of GIMP, okay, because of the YouTube time limit. I have to hurry through this. So I just filled the background with black and go to Filter, Render, Nature, Flame. And that will come up with the Flame plugin. And this is a really cool plugin that gives you kind of a fractal effect to it. And there's different controls for it. We'll get into those in a minute. But first things first, we click on Edit. And under Variation, there's different modes here. And we will pick Spherical. Now, these directions here that it shows you, the middle one is the flame you currently have selected. The ones around it are variations of it. So this one right here looks cool. And that will select it. And there's more variations. We'll choose this one right here. That looks cool. And we will pick OK. It's right there. OK. And we got camera controls here. We can zoom in on it. We can move it over. So like right about there. And then also there's brightness. We can really brighten it up. Or there's contrast. You know, if we are using colors for it. There's gamma, which basically if you turn it up, it removes the alpha channel and you bring it down it leaves you know it gets more alpha channel so generally don't play with it there's density uh, over sample filter radius I really don't know what those are for I haven't used them too much but the final thing for it is the color map and the color map is what really looks cool now if we click it we've got different options here yeah, custom gradient and gradients. There's a uh, gross Joset or Jose. You got uh, Cal Coast 09, Rose, Sunny Harvest, and basically, if you click on those, it will pick a palette, which is a collection of colors like the palette for the web. You know, most websites in the early days, the maximum number of colors to use was 256, and you know, since then, it's gotten a lot more advanced, so we can use many, many colors. But that's basically what a palette is. It is a collection of the colors that it will use. And there's different ones here. You can go through, choose them. And then finally there's custom gradient, which is the gradient you have selected at the moment. Now because I have my default colors is black and white, that's the gradient. It's going from black to white, you know, with the grays in between. And if you go to your gradients, uh, tablet. If it's not there, you go to File, uh, Dialogs, Gradients, or Control G. But you got different ones in here you can pick. You got like Deep Sea, you've got a uh, German Flag, incand Incandescent, Land and Sea, Metallic something, Purples, but all of those. But we will not use those. No, sir. Or ma'am. We will use this one, it's Gris Joset or Jose. And this palette has a mixture of blacks, whites, a little bit of gray, but it's also like a light blue color and it kind of gives it a metallic look, which is what we need for any color correction we later do. So we will pick that. It's positioned where I want it. Gamma is set good. We'll pick OK and that will render it and place it on the background. And there it is, and it looks pretty cool. It's a little crazy. And it's off to the side, which is good. Okay, so the first thing we're do going to do is select the layer and duplicate it. And with the second one, we will change this, the blending mode to add. That will really highlight it. But we're also going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Put it about 10 pixels is pretty fine for that. And so now it's got a slight glow to it. You got the highlights here. 
and we will go take the second layer and duplicate it again. That will really blow it out some more. And we will go to Gaussian Blur. Again, increase it to about 20. Pick OK. And we might even change the screen mode to, yeah, we'll change it to, to, we'll leave it on add, I guess. But we'll lower the opacity to about 50. Okay, and we will merge these layers together. So right click, go down to the bottom, flatten image, and we'll go to color, color balance, and we'll go to the bottom slider, the yellow and blue, and we'll slide it all the way over to blue because blue looks really sweet. And that looks cool. And we might even take the cyan here and just push it the other way just a little bit so it's a little more of a greenish blue. And we'll pick OK. To color uh, levels and just slide this one over just a little bit just to get rid of these longer lines over here because they don't look so good. We'll just slide these over just a little bit. Maybe even bring the gray one over and pick OK. And this will really highlight, bring out the colors even more while getting rid of some of the, you know, the trailing ones that don't help. And that looks cool. I love this plugin. It's so much fun. OK, and we will go to Filter, Light and Shadow, Lens Flare. Because a lens flare would look very good in this case. And basically, you have to pick a really bright spot in the picture for it. Like right here, this is the brightest spot, which is right here. So we'll click on that. It will position it there. And there it is, shooting off into nowhere. And we'll pick OK. OK, there it is. It is on there. It, but it does not look very good. And the reason for this is because it does not match the blue. This blue flame, it does not fit, you know, because you got some yellow, orange, and red in here. It's not what we want. So we will go to Edit, Undo, and create a new layer, make it black. And we will go to Filter, Repeat Lens Flare. Now the reason we didn't do this at first is because of the fact that we would have to guess just where the position is. If we did it on this layer and actually rendered it out, the lens flare will remember where the position is and it will put it exactly there. So that looks about right. And we will go to blend mode, change it, set it to screen for now. And we will color correct it by going to colors, curves. And we will take the red one, bring that down, Go to the blue, bring that up. Go to the green, bring that um, up a little bit, I guess. Bring the blue bit up higher. Bring the red down just a little bit. Go to the value, and we'll just lower it just a little bit. Just trying to get a contrast, a nice contrast curve. That looks pretty good. So there it is. You got a nice blue lens flare, some nice fractal effect on the background here. And go through the blend modes. Uh, screen works best in this case. Sometimes add or addition does. And the only thing left to really do to this is add some more background elements here, maybe some stars. I won't go into that. Make sure you go to the website, everythingeffects.tk. Go to the blog, follow along. If you have questions, post them in the forum or on the YouTube account. Yeah, downloads. And there's a showcase. So if you use our work in something, we'll post it here for you. And everybody will be able to see it. And we'll be proud that we helped out. YouTube channel, you know, subscribe. Make sure to hit that button. And also, now I have a YouTube channel, which is probably where you're watching this. Everything affects David. And that's it for this tutorial. Okay. So, I'm David Wood for everythingaffects.tk, and I will see you next time.